It's time for Real Talk with Brian and Dan, the weekly talk radio show dedicated to discussing important real estate topics, plus insight into the local community. With a combined experience of over 50 years as local real estate brokers from the Eastside Real Estate Team at Keller Williams Realty Bellevue. Here's your hosts, Brian Levitt and Dan Edwards. Well, good afternoon and welcome to Real Talk with Brian and Dan on 1150 KKNW. It is a rainy Wednesday, February 5th. Make it stop, Brian. Make it stop. what year, Dan? Uh, Let's see, 2020. Got it. I got it. I nailed it this week. Yep. Hey, listen, folks, we are glad that you joined us today. In In addition to listening to us on the radio, we are live streaming on YouTube. You can check us out on 1150 KKNW on their YouTube channel. And if you're looking to listen to past episodes, you can always listen to our podcasts on Google Podcasts or Apple Podcasts. Additionally, we have videos of each broadcast available on our website, theeastsiderealestateteam.com, or on our YouTube channel. Simply search for the Eastside Real Estate Team, and if you like what you hear, please subscribe. We've got another great show today, Brian. I'm looking forward to it. We've got a full house. A full house today, big time. So first off, we're going to have PJ, PJ Glassy of the X-Gym, and Bruce Flemmer of Michael Bruce Consulting, along with Pamela and Beck, his entourage. So we're going to have some fun. But before we get to our guests today, as always, it's time for some Real Talk. And in today's Real Talk segment, we're talking about the number one reason it's difficult to find your dream home. Brian? The headlines in real estate today all revolve around one major point. There's a shortage of homes available for sale. Price appreciation is beginning to accelerate again because of the shortage. It's a supply and demand issue. Uh, There's fewer homes available right now, largely because uh, people are holding off. It's just, you know, uh, um, often people are looking for the replacement home before they go on market. So uh, um, people looking at lower price points are the ones that are really finding uh, the most difficulty. Boomers are staying in their current homes longer because of that shortage. And uh, uh, in certain markets, affordability is becoming more challenging because of the shortage available for sale. So, Brian, the most common question we're getting is what's the major reason for this lack of housing inventory? And the issue was recently examined by an article at the National Home Builders Association. And in that article... Robert Diaz, chief economist for the uh, National Builders Association, um, he said this, home building in the 2010s was a story of a long recovery. After the Great Recession, the number of home builders declined significantly and housing production was unable to meet buyer's demand. Years of population and housing formation growth combined with relative, relatively reduced levels of home building has left the market in a critical supply of shortage. Check out these numbers, Brian. Yeah, here are the single-family home construction starts decade by decade for the last six decades. Uh, the 1960s, 9.3 million construction starts. In the 70s, 11.4 million. Mm-hmm. 80s, 9.9 million. 90s, 11 million. 2000s, 12.3 million. And here's the, the big one that'll uh, That's crazy. surprise me. Uh, the 2010s, 6.8 million. That's, Huge decline. That's the lowest right. amount of buildings in over, what, 60 years? 60 years. Crazy. Obviously, there's a current shortage of homes for sale because not enough homes were being built over the last 10 years. To add to the challenge, the U.S. population expanded by more than 20 million people during the uh, 2010s. So with that kind of supply uh, and, you know, home housing formations growing it's right. pretty crazy right it seems like there's no you know like a gray skies of seattle like there's no <laughs> silver lining but there is yeah. good news so according to this uh nh uh the the new housing uh board those guys of that article before what is N-A- it nahb nahb article explains that there's light at the end of the tunnel how confident home builders are right now makes the difference and according to them and the wells fargo housing market index it gauges builders perceptions of current single-family home sales and sales expectations for the next six months. Good, fair, or poor. And the survey asks builders to rate traffic of prospective buyers as the high, the very high, average, or low to very low. And scores for each component are then used to calculate a seasonally adjusted index with a number over 50 indicates that more builders view good than poor. Okay, that's a very complicated way of saying that the majority of the builders in 2019 have a confidence rating of 76. That's way over 50. Uh, and it's the highest it's been. So builders are very 
um, very much looking towards building, and that's what we need. I mean, obviously, when when our population is like this, and uh, right. I mean, to, to, in the 1960s, we had more building than last year. That's right. crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. So, in addition to that, low interest rates. Low interest rates affect builders because they need money in order to build homes. So by having low interest rates, it actually allows them to kind of infuse capital into their businesses building faster because a, a certain banks, depending on the project, will only lend a certain amount of right. money for construction. So having a lower interest rates makes the cost of money cheaper and therefore they can build more. The increase in housing uh, starts has already begun. According to the January report from the U.S. Census Bureau and the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, Single-family housing starts were up by 11.2% and attained the highest level in 13 years. Bottom line, whether you're a first-time buyer or a seller thinking of moving up or down, 2020 could be your year with more new construction homes coming to market. Now, as we have a few minutes left to talk about new construction and the speed of build, we've mentioned this before, so I want our listeners to pay attention. When you go to a new construction site, Um, and you're looking at new homes to purchase, understand that in most aspects, the agent on site represents the builder. Right. So you need to make sure that you protect your investment and use a buyer's broker, sign a contract with a buyer's broker to represent you at that site. Um, Generally speaking, the builder will still pay uh, the agent. You don't have to pay money out of your pocket, but you're getting representation because at this quick pace of build with a very tight labor market, you're going to run into a situation where you need to make sure that's a quality built home and your agent should be able to defend you and, and make sure that what you're getting is what you expect to get. Right. You know, uh, Dan and I were talking about one we saw recently that was horrendous. Yeah. New construction, just not built to standard. Yeah. I mean, I've never seen finished carpentry this bad. Right. So, so make sure that you're uh, reaching out to a professional to help you with that. So, That concludes our Real Talk for today. And if you're interested in this and other topics that are covered in our Real Talk segment, you can check out our blog site on the Eastside Real Estate Team slash blog. If you'd like to talk with us directly about your real estate questions, feel free to reach out to us at 425-200-4093. Thanks for listening. Next up will be um, our mortgage moment with our lender. Stay tuned. After our commercial break, we'll hear more about the housing market and Michael Burdick, an experienced loan consultant with Loan Depot. So more real talk right after this break. Did you know when you pay rent, you're actually paying someone else's mortgage? Are you tired of missing out on owning your own home? Fact, homeowners on average have 40 times the financial net worth of renters. The Eastside Real Estate Team has been helping many first-time home buyers find and buy their first home. They specialize in customer service and put you first. They listen first to what you're looking for, and then they take the time to make sure their clients understand every aspect of the home buying process. If owning a home has been your dream, the Eastside Real Estate Team can help you. For a free, no-hassle consultation, call 425-200-4093 or find them online at theeastsiderealestateteam.com, a subsidiary of Keller Williams Realty in Bellevue. Are you tired of failing your New Year's resolutions? PJ helps you reach your health and fitness goals faster and with less willpower required through the use of his time-saving exercise methodology, brain rewiring techniques, and habit hacks. PJ has helped thousands of people over the last three decades through X-Gym, blogging, his book, online training, his exercise app, YouTube, online courses, workshops, public and corporate talks, and personal coaching. For more information, contact him at pj at xgym.com. I'm not trustworthy. I'm not good at what I do. I don't care about the details. I'm not confident in my abilities. 
As professionals, we want to make sure that what we're communicating is what we want to communicate. The team at Michael Bruce Image Consulting will help you take control of the message that you're sending with your personal style. Their team of professional image consultants will educate and guide you through the process of helping you find the authentic you and your style. In business, style is not a luxury. It's a necessary strategy for success. For more information, go to Michael Bruce Image Consulting Consulting.com and fill out the simple personal style assessment and get scheduled for a no obligation style assessment with an image consultant. Working hard to put a smile on your face. Alternative Talk 1150. Welcome back to the Rainiest Show in the Northwest. You're listening to Real Talk with Brian and Dan. I'm Brian. And I'm Dan. It's now time for our Mortgage Moment segment. During this segment, we're going to talk about how to best prepare your finances for making an offer. And we're going to also dig deep into why um, why you would work with Michael Burdick at Loan Depot. Welcome back to the show, Michael. Hi, guys. Thanks for having me. Hey, glad you're here. Hey, uh, Michael, why do you work for Loan Depot and what differentiates you from other lenders? So there are actually many reasons uh, why I, I choose to, to hold my license here at Loan Depot. And really, it's, it's the options that we have. Um, when you look at like a bank or credit union, you're only going to have a certain amount of options. So they're not really, you know, sometimes they aren't placing the, the client in the best option because they only have the, the, the few options that they have. So with Loan Depot, we have many options for clients, um, which is awesome. That's Another awesome. reason is our, te our technology. Um, and it's, you know, a, a company that has placed so much emphasis on the technology and, and really just streamlining the process for our clients. And, you know, a lot of other people's kind of strategy is to just put more and more people on, on the loans to touch it and, and get it pushed through. But we've, we've set back and, and, are doing a different strategy and just really trying to streamline it through our tech. And what that means for our clients is it helps us do a loan for cheaper and they get to reap the benefits of having lower costs and, and better rates because of that. I know a lot of our, um, a lot of our clients out there are pretty tech savvy, right? They're very much integrated and connected to it. And um, you know, our office Keller Williams and what's being done there uh, a lot of, technology is being utilized in the real estate market and the whole purpose of that is to enhance the experience so how does how does that technology enhance the experience for your consumers so you know a, a product that's a Fannie Freddie product that every lender almost has access to is, is digitally verifying assets and income but the, the thing that other companies are, are doing is they've purchased services that will allow them to do this and they've kind of Frankensteined all this tech into mm -hmm. a bunch of different systems for their company but Home Depot has it all integrated proprietary into one kind of decision engine so I get better results with these programs and if we can you know get somebody to apply online put their information in and we get a hit on assets and income it means that they don't have to go find all their documentation we get an immediate documented pre-approval within seconds so i mean I, I don't know of any other company that can do it the way that we're doing it and it's really at the forefront and, and very innovative for the mortgage industry awesome awesome so um what should you do prior to applying for a mortgage to set yourself up for success so you know we've talked about this many times but really it's, it's sitting down with a lender and getting pre-approved that's obviously going to be needed before you make an offer but um, before you even do that there are a couple things that you should kind of get in a row and, and that's save your down payment um, mm -hmm. there are loans out there that don't require a down payment but you're still going to want to set aside a chunk of money that you can use for earnest money um, or closing costs assuming that a seller won't chip it in now sometimes we get the trifecta of somebody going zero down and getting a seller credit, you know, in, in that situation, they can sometimes even get their earnest money deposit refunded after closing. But in a competitive market, it, it just depends on what the client's looking for. That's not always the case. Sure. Other things you can do, um, pay off debt. You know, it, that's going to allow you to be approved for more mortgage. 
Um, and then we do need a two-year work history. So, you know, displaying a consistent job history, uh, you know, you don't need to work at your employer for two years, but we do need to show some, some sort of consistency in your industry that you've been working at. Um, you know, if during that two-year uh, where we have to put on the application, if there's four or five jobs that can be considered a risk, yeah. obviously. So, Michael, uh, uh, thanks for that great information. How can our listeners reach you? So, I'm in Bellevue with Loan Depot. You can find me online. The best number for me is 206 661-2289. And uh, Michael Burdick would love to hear from you. Awesome. Thanks, Michael. It's been very informative. Next up, after the break, we have PJ Glassy of XGym, who will be talking about brain hacks for easy, permanent health and fitness. More real talk right after this break. Not sure if now is the right time to sell? Worried you missed the market? The Eastside Real Estate Team specializes in helping homeowners maximize their equity when selling. With our proven premier listing service, our clients have sold their homes for more money in less time than the competition. We know you have many choices when working with a real estate agent, but with the Eastside Real Estate Team, you get a team of highly qualified, experienced agents. From staging to deciding if your property is market ready for top dollar. If you're considering selling, call the Eastside Real Estate Team at 425-200-4093. Or check out our website at the Eastside Real Estate Team.com, a subsidiary of Keller Williams Realty in Bellevue. Confused about your home insurance coverage? Frustrated with rising premiums? Wondering why your insurance agent never communicates with you? Dan Gelhe with Insurance Services Network helps Washington families just like yours demystify and simplify the whole insurance process from start to finish. He works hard to tailor make a comprehensive package based on your needs and your budget. Dan does not work for any one insurance company, but rather partners with a number of preferred financially strong companies. This means he works for you and not the insurance carrier. Dan truly did lower all my rates and got me more coverage. And he's one of the nicest, well-mannered people on the planet, says Josie in Seattle. Dan Gelhe with Insurance Services Network. For a no-obligation insurance review, contact him today at 425-641-6334. That's 425-641-6334. Fingerprint Marketing creates and spreads an online presence for small businesses so they stand out as the choice and not just another choice in this highly competitive digital world. Fingerprint Marketing designs and maintains websites and digital marketing that your competitors want when they grow up. For more information, visit their website at fingerprintmarketing.com. That's fingerprintmarketing.com or contact them at 425-283-3943. Get inspired every hour right here on Alternative Talk 1150. Welcome back. You're listening to Real Talk with Brian and Dan on 1150 KKNW. I'm Brian. And I'm Dan. Our first guest today is PJ Glassy of XGym, who's going to share with us some brain hacks for easy, permanent health and fitness. PJ Glassy is the author and gym owner biohacker, exercise scientist, logging over 15,000 hours of research and more than 35,000 hours of personal training in the last 30 years of business. He has studied the fields of exercise science, health science, nutrition science, and brain science since 1987 and has used the information to test and develop the systems and methods that he uses at his ex-gym founded in 1998. These include his own unique exercise methodology requiring only 21 minutes twice a week, which produces the equivalent results comparable to over seven hours of traditional training, but also his health course, habit course, brain type tests, and brain training techniques all help people who to literally rewrite their brains to think and act like a fit and healthy person. So results come faster with less willpower, but most importantly and permanent are permanent so they can crush the weight loss yo-yo once and for all and achieve sustainable health that they have always wanted. Woo, PJ. Yeah. 
Welcome to the show. Thanks. Science and fitness. That's right. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm really excited to kind of dig deep in with you. But before we do that, why don't you share when you're not sciencing out, geeking out, fitting out, what are some of the hobbies and interests that you enjoy? Oh, my, my beautiful Beverly, my wife, would laugh at that question because <laughs> there's not a whole lot I do because I enjoy research so much. I'm a junkie. I'm an addict, and I just can't really stop. But she balances me out, and she helps you know get me out every once in a while. And what we've been doing lately is jeeping. So I have a Jeep, okay. Willie's, and... Mm-hmm. Uh, got it lifted, and so we're out and playing around the ORV parks and with some friends who also have Jeeps and other four-wheel drive vehicles. And uh, that's been – we've been mudding lately because it's been raining so much. So we need to do have a choice. Yeah. yeah. I know, yeah. I, I've got the FJ, and I haven't taken it out, so I need oh to know gosh. where to go. So yeah, let's talk. Yeah. Let's go Jeep, and, and I'll went, bring my FJ. Yeah, we I went Jeeping with an FJ a couple of weeks ago. Okay, yeah. can't we change it, it to great. FJing? Yeah, we can. <laughs> well, it'll be an FJ weekend. Well, I've got my okay. old school FJ. Oh, you, you do? The, one, you the, the OG. Yeah. OG FJ. <laughs> awesome. So, I'm just curious. 21-minute workout. Do you have a video for that? Yeah. Is there an abs version? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Eight-minute abs. Yeah. yeah. So, we like to ask our guests to share a fond memory of the home you grew up in. What do you got? So, I grew up on Mercer Island. I moved here to Washington State when I was eight, and... So the house that I grew up in was not too big, not too small, two story, uh, and it had it was a great neighborhood. It was south end of Mercer Island, super safe, especially back mm-hmm. then. And um, it still is though. I mean, Mercer Island is just an amazing place to live. And you guys go down to the beach club there, right? Yeah, yeah. we were members of the beach club. Yeah, yep, hung out there nice. a lot. And there were trees to climb, a lot of cedar trees on Mercer Island. So hmm. I got my tree climbing in when I was young. And, you know, rode my bike places, walked around the neighborhood with no worries. So it's just a, such a great place to, to grow awesome. up. Yeah, that's awesome. Thanks for sharing. Mm-hmm. So what got you started in exercise science research? Well, it's my degree in exercise science. Okay. And I actually started out as a psych major at Seattle Pacific University. And then I switched to exercise science my senior year. And so that made me stay an extra year. But I really wanted to to pursue my passion. I mean, psychology is certainly a deep love of mine. I love that. But I just got to thinking, well, do I really want to sit around and listen to people's problems all day? Or do I want to pursue my other passion of fitness and really help people with that? Because the goal, the bottom line was to help people. Mm -hmm. They like doing that. And so I just switched to uh, the fitness and got Mm -hmm. my degree in exercise science. So the degree was fantastic. And it, it taught me how to read research Mm-hmm. And how to know if a study is valid or not. And as I was doing that, so that was back in the 80s when we didn't have the internet, didn't exist yet. And so we had to go down to the actual library. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> the what? And, then, and open up real books and periodicals. So oh. when I started doing my research, working on my, my research paper my senior year, I went down and, and uh, tried to find as many periodicals as I could. And there's only about half a dozen. So I went back to my hmm. professor. I also went to Seattle Library. Same problem. Went back to him. I said, hey, what's going on? I can't find research journals. Uh, maybe I'm just horrible at the Dewey Decimal System or there just aren't any. He goes, yeah, there aren't hmm. any. That's, you found them all. Oh, wow. And yeah, and that's what's exciting about our field is we're pioneers hmm. in this field. Huh. And that got me okay. really jazzed. And I said, all right, I, I'm going to invent a new methodology that will save people time and, and solve some of the problems with traditional training. So you also got uh, started in health and nutrition science research. Tell mm-hmm. us about that. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, the mass media talks about a lot of things, and it, it usually promotes fads and drama and things like that, and most of it is wrong. Hmm. And hmm. most of what our government tells us is also wrong. And so I learned that through my research. And so I really got into nutrition science as well because exercise is all fine and dandy, but what most people don't realize is Ex- well, people are looking to lose weight. A lot of people want to get lighter, mm-hmm. and they're talking scale weight, all right? So as far as scale weight goes, exercise is actually a lousy way to lose weight because you're gaining muscle at the same time. Mm-hmm. So you're trading fat for muscle, which is great, but the scale is not going to really tell you that. And so I yeah. went into nutrition science and studied that more because that's really how to get the fat off the most effectively and fastest, and that's mm. what most people want to do. So that's what got me into studying that to find the truth and wade through all the, all the fiction and fads that the media is promoting. 
Now, in your introduction, too, we're talking about brain science. So mm-hmm. how did you get from, you know, exercise, now nutrition, yeah. now yeah. brain? I think so I'm I was, seeing a pattern here. Yeah, right, right. So it's really an evolution. And thanks to my mom, who got me into the brain science, she was diagnosed in the year 2000 with early onset Alzheimer's disease. Oh, wow. And so I said, wow, you know, I, I got to figure out how to help her. So I dove into the brain science, learned a ton of stuff. I was already really interested in that because I'm, you know, my psych passion. And so then the stuff back then wasn't advanced enough, so couldn't really help her. Hmm. So she passed in 2005. But over the years, it was becoming so much more exciting because of all the new stuff that kept coming out every year. So I never stopped researching it. I knew I could... I would find and discover some new things that would help other people. And so I just kept in it. And that's really got me into the whole passion of the, the brain branch of this research. And it's helped a ton of people with health and fitness as well. So what got you started in habit hacking and what is habit hacking? Habit hacking is tips and tricks and shortcuts, how to develop new habits and break old habits. Mm-hmm. which is really hard to do. It sounds simple, but it's not easy. And, but when you figure out some brain hacks, and mostly brain hacks, but also exercise hacks, to hack your habits, get out of the bad ones and into the new ones, then that really helps people a lot faster because we are what we repeatedly do. Mm-hmm. We are our habits. Our, whatever situation we're in, whether it be health, wealth, spirituality, whatever it is, whatever level we are at at any given moment is a result of our habits. So I remember years ago, I first downloaded the app Audible, and mm-hmm. the first book that I read on Audible was The Power of Habits. Yep. Good and one. it's, it's talking that. about um, how you can't really actually cha- like get rid of a habit string. You have to mm-hmm. replace the condition with the response. Yep. Can you unpack the habit hacking and how that applies to your ex-gym? Mm-hmm. And I work with people at the X gym on their habits because that is the main thing. You know, other trainers are going to tell their clients what to do and what to eat. And then the client is going to go out and do that for a day or a week. And then they're going to come back and they'll go, oh, I just can't do it. I don't know what's wrong with me. And the trainer's like, yeah, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Have some willpower. I can do it. Look yeah, at me. Come on, suck yeah. it up. Hmm. But what they don't realize is it's about the habits. Mm-hmm. You know, it, the, the brain wants to do the easiest thing. And we have neural networks that are formed in our brain. And the brain is going to want to go to the status quo. It's going to want to go to the, the networks and the nerve pathways that are already formed because that's easier than forming new ones. Mm-hmm. And forming new, new pathways is really hard unless you know some brain tricks and some habit hacks. And so that's what I developed to help the mm. people at the X gym first. But now I'm helping a lot of other people because I have developed a habit course to help people and uh, just finishing that up actually it's version two version one was a few years ago and Mm -hmm. so I perfected I'm a scientist and I just I experiment and I refine and evolve so it's just getting better every year awesome yeah so why'd you start the X gym to scale myself Mm -hmm. so when I graduated from SPU I was training most people people mostly out of their homes and they were my guinea pigs so I was, I was using <laughs> I was, them. I was going to ask you, you yep. said you keep experimenting. Who are you experimenting I with? I know. Yeah. I have lots of <laughs> guinea pigs now. Yeah, it's great. And they all know it. There's no secret. Yeah. And Because the X-Gym is a lab, too. And oh, so anyways, my initial clients were the experimental subjects. They thought it was fun because, you know, trying new stuff. Some of it worked. Some of it didn't. I threw out the stuff that didn't work. I'd keep the stuff that did work. And it evolved and got better over time until it got down to 21 minutes twice a week. Wow. So what experiments are you currently conducting? Right now, I'm uh, playing around with blood flow restriction training. Hmm. Oh, I've never so, heard of that. Yeah. So, Suffocating yourself? I don't know. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, well, well, blood flow, you not airflow. Well, I was thinking <laughs> blood flow. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there are bands that you pump up around your arms or your legs. And uh, so the, the, the theory behind it is, it's not tight enough that it restricts arterial blood flow. So the, the blood hmm. flow still gets into the limb, but it is tight enough to restrict the venous blood flow so it doesn't get oh. out. So it's trapped in there. <laughs> yeah. And then when it's trapped in there, you can do actually low intensity exercise. Yeah. But your limb feels like and it thinks it's high intensity exercise. 
So it's a it's a it's an intensity hack, but it's also a time hack. So you can get more done in less time with less intensity, and you fool your limb into thinking it's high intensity, so you get faster, better results. Faster fatigue. Yes. Yeah. It's super painful too. Oh, great. <laughs> That's interesting. So there's always a trade off, right? There's no totally easy way. But uh, yeah, it, it's so far it's really working. That's and it's really crazy. crazy. Yeah, really is going to pump you up. <laughs> yeah, it, it does. It really <laughs> does <laughs> pump you up. <laughs> yeah. So what's your favorite brain hack? Uh, tapping. Tapping. Yeah, tapping on your face and certain places of your body. Huh. They're called energy meridians. It's an acupressure. Heard that before. Yeah, it's an accurate. It's a little pressure. awkward. Yeah. It is a little awkward. It's hard to do in public. People think you're OCD. <laughs> but uh, it's super effective. It's uh, Emotional freedom technique is another really common um, term that's used for this. Hmm. Uh, tapping.com is a really popular website that people can go and learn more about it. But this one of my brain hacks for... Um, hmm. Why yeah, is it a brain person. hack? It, isn't it a physical hack? It is. It's a neural hack. Uh-huh. So hmm. a neural network or a nerve pathway will be short-circuited when you're doing this. So I most commonly coach people through craving addictions hmm. to certain foods, and they'll use it. it can, you can also hack um, and disrupt a neural network that's in emotion. So oh. if you're feeling a certain emotion that's a trigger to emotional eating, you can disrupt that with this hack. With that, for hacking the tapping for the emotion, or you can tap for a certain food or a craving, hmm. mm-hmm. and then yeah, and if it works, it doesn't work for everybody, but most people it does. And if it does work, it's permanent. Oh wow! So you can permanently wipe out a craving. I did it for like two or three hundred foods when I, back when I first learned this technique, mm-hmm. and now I don't need to anymore because they're all wiped out, and I don't have cravings for bad foods. Oh. I don't have to resist anything because I don't crave mm-hmm. anything other than good foods. Just totally rewired, but uh, I use it for moods now because you can never get rid of. I mean, you don't want to be Doctor Spock on, tar- on Star Trek, right? <laughs> so you want to you want to have emotions, but but sometimes they're not serving you. I mean, even anger can serve you in a way, right? It can be a resource at times. Yeah. But there's certain emotions you don't want to be in that state, the crummy state. So I can tap myself out of a crummy state. But I've been doing it for so many years, and it's a skill that gets built with practice. That right now I'm so good at it. I can just do it at a stoplight, and 20 seconds later, boom, I'm, I'm fine. It's why I like White Christmas, because the whole tapping scene, it just taps you into happiness. <laughs> oh, Sorry, please. different, different. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, so we have time for one last question. Mm-hmm. Um, or actually, no, we're actually out of time. So, yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah, looking at that. that. We had a lot to talk about, and yeah. we should have you back on yeah. and kind of go deeper on some of these things. Great, but yeah. I really thank you for coming on and sharing today. Love it. All right? Yeah, right Cool. On. Thanks. All right. How so, do I, what, one last one. How do our okay. listeners reach you? Yes, thank you. XGym.com. My email is pj at xgym.com. Those are the best ways. All right. You can so find them on Instagram at xgyms, mm-hmm. at xgyms. Thank you again for coming right on. on. Thanks. All right. After the break, we are welcoming Michael Bruce Image Consulting, who will be discussing with our style. Okay, hold on. Let me try that again. After the break, we're welcoming Michael Bruce, Image Consulting, who will be discussing with our style, spring trends, and what people can hire in a style company. Stay tuned. Did you know when you pay rent, you're actually paying someone else's mortgage? Are you tired of missing out on owning your own home? Fact. Homeowners on average have 40 times the financial net worth of renters. The Eastside Real Estate Team has been helping many first-time home buyers find and buy their first home. They specialize in customer service and put you first. They listen first to what you're looking for and then they take the time to make sure their clients understand every aspect of the home buying process. If owning a home has been your dream, the Eastside Real Estate Team can help you. For a free, no-hassle consultation, call 425-200-4093 or find them online at the Eastside Real Estate Team a subsidiary of Keller Williams Realty in Bellevue. Are you tired of failing your New Year's resolutions? PJ helps you reach your health and fitness goals faster and with less willpower required through the use of his time-saving exercise methodology, brain rewiring techniques, and habit hacks. 
PJ has helped thousands of people over the last three decades through X Gym, blogging, his book, online training, his exercise app, YouTube, online courses, workshops, public and corporate talks, and personal coaching. For more information, contact him at PJ at xgym.com. I'm not trustworthy. I'm not good at what I do. I don't care about the details. I'm not confident in my abilities. As professionals, we want to make sure that what we're communicating is what we want to communicate. The team at Michael Bruce Image Consulting will help you take control of the message that you're sending with your personal style. Their team of professional image consultants will educate and guide you through the process of helping you find the authentic you and your style. In business, style is not a luxury. It's a necessary strategy for success. For more information, go to Michael Bruce Image Consulting com and fill out the simple personal style assessment and get scheduled for a no obligation style assessment with an image consultant. Tell your friends about Alternative Talk 1150. Welcome back to Real Talk with Brian and Dan on 1150 AM KKNW. I'm Brian. And I'm Dan. Our next guests are Bruce Flammer, Pamela Forgrave, and Beck Rillier with Michael Bruce Image Consulting. Hope I didn't butcher your names there. No, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> good, good. Um, so Michael Bruce Image Consulting is a premier top-to-toe image consulting team based in the greater Seattle area. They work with a diverse client base to identify and elevate their personal style by educating how to dress authentically for their lifestyle, body type, and budget. Working with clients to address their interior allows Michael Bruce Image Consulting to address their exterior with a personal style that is authentic and therefore long-lasting. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Thanks for, having for having us. us. Hey, where's Michael Bruce? Right here. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so we like to ask each of our guests to share a fond memory of the home they grew up in. I, I think for, when I think about the home I grew up in, I was asking these guys about this earlier. My dad was a huge, huge music guy. He loved music. I've grown up with music since I was really, really small. Hmm. And he actually put in a complete sound system throughout our entire house. So oh, there wow. was wow. music in every single room. In fact, he had one thing in this, our main room, which actually the music played to lights. What? The music the lights, did what? The lights played to music. Oh, oh really? right on. Synchronized? Yeah, synchronized. Nice. So what kind of music? Come on. Grew up with a little Motown, you know, <laughs> night, you know. Could have been classical, could have been. You know what? Um, jazz, could have been. Little jazz. E-bop. So my dad was a little bit jazz. He was kind of in Miles Davis, and he likes a little bit jazz. of blue gra- oh. little blues like, you know, B.B. King and stuff mm. like that. But a lot of Motown, you know, a lot of Motown. <laughs> a lot of Motown. All right. So um, what kind of people hire a style company? Well, I think it's um, you can't really pigeonhole who would actually hire a star company. We'd like to look at it as though people, anybody that's in a transition period in their life is usually who's going to contact us. So that could be anybody that's looking to change direction with their job or they've had um, you know, a big event happen in their life, whether it is uh, they've moved from one part of the country to another where the <laughs> culture of how you dress is different. Um, divorce, weight gain, weight loss, all of those things. So anything really where someone feels that there's been a big transition and they're trying to navigate that and how that reflects their, you know, their outward appearance, those are the kinds of people that would typically reach out to an image consultant company. And just for the listeners, that's Pamela. That's Pamela, Pamela, what's your role with uh, Michael? I'm Beck? an image consultant. Okay, so you're doing all of this stuff and you're helping people find a new, like I heard transition in there, right? Yeah, and it's not really about, it's not a makeover and it's not trying to change the person. It's really what we do is we develop a rapport with them. We really, we dig deep into, you know, what are their goals? What are the challenges that they're facing right now? Mm -hmm. And really what have they done in the past and what do they tend to gravitate towards? What we wanna do is find the image for them that really reflects who they are deeply with inside. So we're not dressing them up like anybody else so that when we, we come together as a team and we, we work on what that vision looks like for them, it feels authentic to who they are. So it's sustainable. So when, they, when they're done with the process, they can step outside and feel fabulous about the, you know, the, the, this journey that they've been on and it's them. It's them, mm-hmm. it's just an elevated version of them. Hmm, awesome. So what uh, made you want to have an image consulting company? 
You know, I, that's uh, interesting when people ask me that question. It was a funny story, actually. I was at a party at Christmas time, and I was standing there with a buddy of mine, and six people came up to me and said, dude, okay, so how do I look? What do you think? What would you change? <laughs> you know, what do you think about this? And I'm like, okay, I would do this small tweak. That looks great. Super cute shoe. Uh, this, whatever. And, and he, as I walked away, and I was laughing, and my buddy looked at me, and he said, Dude, you cannot give that away anymore. You can I'm monetize like, that. I said, get <laughs> yeah. what away? And I'm like, it's just the rest of my, my help. And he was like, you actually could have a company. And he goes, they all walked away like, oh, my gosh, Bruce either approved it or he didn't approve it. I want to change it, you know, whatever. And so that's actually what made me start thinking about possibly having an image consulting company because people need to feel good yeah. about their personal style. Now, um, Bruce is, for those of you listening, don't I, I've always said, I would love to sell million dollar homes while wearing a hoodie. You know, <laughs> he's so comfortable. But he's got a hoodie on and as he long looks as it's smashing, you know, if <laughs> yeah. I can use a fashion term. I like you look that. marvelous. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> fabulous. <laughs> so maybe I get one of those hoodies, you know? Okay, what's the difference between a stylist and an image consultant, Pamela? So the main difference is, I mean, a stylist can put together a great outfit for an individual, but as image consultants, we look at it a little differently. We can help from head to toe. So that is, you know, coming up with a vision for somebody's hairstyle. And that's based mm. on the coloration of their skin, the type of hair that they have, their facial shape, all of those kinds of things. We can help with um, eyewear, makeup, the actual outfits, the closet, the whole thing. But what we also do as image consultants is we can help direct people with things like their executive presence and how they actually put themselves forward in certain positions. So helping with little tweaks about mannerisms and those kinds of things. So it's an overall package. It really is head to toe. It's internal, external, whereas a stylist would mainly think about, oh, how, how do I put together an outfit for an event? We look at it in a bigger scope. So I've heard you now say in internal twice. We're mm -hmm. not talking underwear. What, what are we well, talking about? Actually, I do that too. Okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, okay. Well, we do. I was going to assume. <laughs> so, all right. But, no, but internally, as in, you know, you're reflecting yourself outwardly. So you really, you know, we talked about this earlier on, that authentic portion of it. So really taking who you are, the essence of you, and, and mm. making that a focal point. But yes, we do do foundation <laughs> yeah, right. wear as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. So, Becca, are you up for a question? I am indeed, yeah. So how, how about you walk us through the process? Tell us how this works. So the thing that I like the best is that we always meet with potential clients first to describe the process and make sure they're down with it before we even begin. So mm -hmm. they know what to expect. And for me, the great thing about it is we always start in their closet so we can see what their house looks like, what their lifestyle looks like, what they've got in their closet, what they, you know, we always start with find an outfit you felt really good in and put it on for us. It's a great place to start, and everyone has these great gems in their closet. So while we're in the closet, we're taking all kinds of notes. And, you know, what we're trying to do for a lot of people is put together a capsule wardrobe, which is a really good, succinct base wardrobe mm -hmm. that you can then do separate, lots of accentuating, um, accessorizing, put different looks together. Um, so that we go to the mall and we pull the clothes in their sizes and the styles and the notes. And when the client shows up, all they have to do is the work of trying on all the clothes. Which is work. I mean, you know, I don't take it on putting off clothes is actually pretty exhausting. Right, right. <laughs> but they're not schlepping around the stores. It's all just there waiting for them. So um, it's always two of us working with a client, too. So there is that hmm. feedback. We're not trying to force looks on people. We want them to, you know, push the envelope slightly, but we still want them, as Pamela said, we want it to feel authentic to who they are. Uh, I was talking to a friend of mine, and I don't know if you're familiar with um, Steve Jobs. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. You know the Steve Jobs. Mm -hmm. hey, um, how about, heard of him. Have you heard of him? <laughs> G Gary Keller. He's the founder of Keller Williams. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, both, one thing that's unique about both of the people is they're pretty much very, very high level of intelligence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And for both of them, they have one outfit. It's the same thing that they wear every day. And I thought, gosh, wouldn't oh, that be great? Same I just outfit. go to my closet, grab really? a t shirt, grab a coat, and a pair of jeans, and I just walk out the door. And so when I think of, you know, getting in touch, they didn't, the way Gary describes it is he didn't want to have to think about what he was putting on. And that's and, what we provide. And that's what you provide. Mm -hmm. I, that's yeah. kind of what I was bringing that point around. I'm not saying, hey, can you help me pick out a T-shirt and jeans every day? <laughs> um, obviously, that might be a little boring for me. But for some, it's like that's what they need somebody to come mm -hmm. alongside them and say, I got you taken care of. Yeah, our clients do not think about it. I mean, they have to. we take a lot of pictures, and so they can reference it and go, today I'm going to wear that. And they'll know that when they put it on, it fits great, fits them well. 
Um, it looks really good on them, and they can go throughout their day. Think about yeah. other things. They can pretty much go to their closet with their eyes closed and pick yeah. out an outfit. Oh, yeah, nice. So, Dan, ask the question we've been thinking. What's that one? <laughs> 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 oh, just the judgment question. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right, all right. So, when you see people, <laughs> we know what's oh, coming. We, you know we've never heard this question me? before. Yeah. Are you judging me right that's now? What I'm Absolutely <laughs> not. No. no. So you know that's not our job. It's not our job to judge people. When we're with a client, do we make judgments on the items of clothing as to whether they suit the person and suit their personality and their body shape and all those kinds of things? And how of they course, fit. and how they fit okay. because that's part of what we do. But we don't judge people based on their clothes or any of those kinds of things. It's, it's, we just it's just not what we do. Um, it wouldn't even occur to us. We see the potential in people and we see the potential in their outfits. You know, we can say, oh, you know, a slight modification that would be wonderful. But certainly, our job is not to judge anybody. Well, we didn't mean them. We meant us. <laughs> and we're not judging you either. <laughs> we have noticed, but we're not judging. <laughs> Actually, I tend not to notice. I don't know if That's I walk good. around. I notice it. everything. <laughs> so, what are the most common styling mistakes people make? So, here's the two common styling mistakes: is the majority of people wear their clothes too big. And this is men and women. Yes. Men and women. It's pretty they universal. wear their clothing too big. Well, Whether that was my answer to weight gain. <laughs> <laughs> I will tell people all the time, if you are in the process or if you want to lose weight and then you get to your quote unquote fighting weight or your goal weight and you don't change your wardrobe down to your new size, you will actually put all of that weight back on. Oh. Really? That's probably oh. a brain thing. It is a brain You will yeah, actually that. put the weight because your body's saying, hmm, these clothes are too big. Hmm. I need to fit into them. Oh, wow. uh, another common mistake people make is they actually don't have their clothing altered. So people go, oh, I can't go to the store and buy anything that fits me. It's like, no one can. Right? I did, no one once can. I did a blog that said, there's no such thing as ready to wear clothing. Mm. Most clothing off the rack does not fit most people. Interesting. Right off the rack. Yeah. That's uh, my oldest son. Fit is everything. He is, yeah. He's I got like it. him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, me too. Fit first. Uh, so this sounds expensive. Is this only for the wealthy? No, and I think for me, actually, it's almost more fun when we're shopping with someone who has a tighter budget. It makes it more of a challenge, and I actually, I like the challenge. But mm -hmm. I think that's the great thing is you can, it doesn't necessarily have to be shopping at high-end fancy stores. Mm -hmm. We can do this at thrift stores or, you know, Target mm -hmm. if we needed to. Well, if everything has to be altered, you know, might as well go to a thrift store and then get it altered, right? Well, so the one challenge with that, and so for us, our job, this is what we do, is we, our expertise is in curating, curating tight wardrobes that work for your body type, your lifestyle, and meet your style and image goals. Mm -hmm. A lot of that is actually in the great basics that people do not have. Everyone who wants to go and buy the fun top or the fun jacket or the fun shoe, but then you go, it's like, where's your dark denim jean for dress? Huh? What are you talking about? Mm -hmm. So it's in... Finding those basic items that you could then start adding the fun pieces with it are not available how we need them in stores that are thrift stores or things like that. So we don't necessarily, we won't shop for clients in thrift stores or any discounters because you can't find those items there. Sure, yeah. And our process is so efficient. I mean, we're not in there like, it's not like, oh, hey, we're going to go shop with my stylist for a whole day. Uh-uh. <laughs> There's a process there. It's an efficient process. It works. And that's why we do it the way we do it. So how do our listeners reach you and start the process? Simple. MichaelBruceImageConsulting.com. And how long have you guys been doing this? Oh, I started, well, I rebranded the company Michael Bruce Image Consulting, which that's me. Michael is my middle name. Bruce is my first name. That's I was like, I wait, I don't understand. Absolutely. I thought you were Bruce. <laughs> yep. No, I'm, I'm So, I'm so Bruce. what's your middle name is Bruce? My middle name is Michael. Oh, my middle name's Bruce. Oh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> See, we're connected, Yeah. Man. yeah. <laughs> so a little bit of remaining time we have. What uh, is there a concern that people express when they contact you that you hear over and over? Yeah, Pamela, What's why don't you hit one? that one? I think, <laughs> yeah, I mean, part of that is, you know, they're worried that they're going to be judged. I think the biggest challenge for people is because we start in their closet, that is really intimidating for people. It's like, okay, <laughs> yeah. well, mm -hmm. you, they're inviting us into their personal space, into their bedrooms and their wardrobes. I mean, these are, these are sanctuaries for people. Mm -hmm. So that's usually the biggest concern. That's one of the reasons why we meet with them beforehand, to make sure that there is a connection between them and us and that they feel confident and happy with us coming into their space and that they trust us. So that's, the I think, the biggest challenge for most people is getting over that fear of the unknown and the fear of, okay, what does this whole experience look like yeah. you know are these people just going to tell me everything looks terrible on me is it going to be this is it going to be that when the reality of it is is that our job is to educate 
Mm -hmm. So we are always our um, clients' biggest fans, and we're going to help them visualize and actually get to the point that they want to be at in a great way. We're going to be encouraging. We're going to teach them why things work, why things don't work. So we build up that relationship with them first so that they feel comfortable in that really vulnerable space, the closet and the dressing room. Those are vulnerable spaces for people. There you go. Great. Hey, thank you for coming on the show today, Bruce, Pamela, Beck. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Remember that all segments of our show are available to watch on our YouTube channel. If you're interested in learning more about any of our guests, please subscribe. Join us after the break for some final thoughts and something fun to do. We'll be right back. Not sure if now is the right time to sell? Worried you missed the market? The East Side Real Estate Team specializes in helping homeowners maximize their equity when selling. With our proven premier listing service, our clients have sold their homes for more money in less time than the competition. We know you have many choices when working with a real estate agent, but with the Eastside Real Estate Team, you get a team of highly qualified, experienced agents. From staging to deciding if your property is market ready for top dollar. If you're considering selling, call the Eastside Real Estate Team at 425 200 4093 or check out our website at the Eastside Real Estate Team.com, a subsidiary of Keller Williams Realty in Bellevue. I'm not trustworthy. I'm not good at what I do. I don't care about the details. I'm not confident in my abilities. As professionals, we want to make sure that what we're communicating is what we want to communicate. The team at Michael Bruce Image Consulting will help you take control of the message that you're sending with your personal style. Their team of professional image consultants will educate and guide you through the process of helping you find the authentic you and your style. In business, style is not a luxury. It's a necessary strategy for success. For more information, go to Michael Bruce Image Consulting com and fill out the simple personal style assessment and get scheduled for a no obligation style assessment with an image consultant. Are you tired of failing at your New Year's resolutions? PJ helps you reach your health and fitness goals faster and with less willpower required through the use of his time-saving exercise methodology, brain rewiring techniques, and habit hacks. PJ has helped thousands of people over the last three decades through X-Gym, blogging, his book, online training, his exercise app, YouTube, online courses, workshops, public and corporate talks, and personal coaching. For more information, contact him at pj at xgym.com. Alternative Talk 1150, the talk of the sound. Welcome back to Real Talk on 1150 AM KKNW. As we consider um, some style and some fitness, right? I yeah. feel like we did really Those good for our bodies hand. today. Yeah. You know, um, it's kind of appropriate to not talk about that, but talk about the the skinny housing market. Oh my! You know, um, one of the things that uh, we're talking about on supply is that most of the homes that we're seeing built in our area are very large homes, and there's a couple reasons behind that. And what that does is that puts pressure on the starter homes, on the entry level market, and on on uh, many of our clients who are looking to downsize, smaller homes just aren't out there. And the two big reasons for that are builders typically make a little more money ROI. on the bigger homes, ROI, ROI, return yeah. on investment. But also municipalities um, tend to shift zoning laws towards bigger homes on smaller lots. Mm-hmm. And as I've researched this, as uh, many of you may know, my wife and I are very active working um, in affordable housing. And one of the things that we've come across is when the trend in zoning uh, and really restrictive zoning took off was about the same time that fair housing laws came into play. Hmm. And what we've seen happen is some areas weaponize zoning laws. They build big homes that keep uh, the entry-level market, the lower, you know, lower income earners out. So and what's the solution now? Uh, reasonable uh, um, zoning laws. Yeah. And, you know, like right now in Sammamish, there's a big battle going on to stop uh, building, the main issue being traffic. There's no easy solution. And um, just trying to, you know, stop the uh, um, 
uh, growth, it's not going to work in the long run. Well, I think, too, concentration of amenities can stop a lot of traffic. Right. You know, if you have uh, business centers in cities like Sammamish, like real business centers, right? Um, so people didn't have to commute, right. then they could actually, you know, live, work, and play all in the same yeah. place. So, and, you know, just to be clear, I'm for smart growth, not just, I mean, I think sometimes people assume because Dan and I are real estate brokers, we're kind of pave the earth people. Nothing can be further from the truth. We want smart growth. We want quality life. I and mean, we're Sammamish residents. I'll use Sammamish as an example. We want it to be a happy place. But uh, anyway, speaking of happy places, what's fun going on? Well, uh, if you didn't know, Valentine's Day is right around the corner. So spruce it up with a car- card game fun and festive paper art tutorials. So mm. whether it's for a family, a best friend, or a special someone, give them something personal with a one-of-a-kind card made from heart. Make your special card this Saturday from 12 to 3 at Bellevue Square Story at Macy's. So if you go to Bellevue Square and you go to the Story, which must be a place. I don't go to the mall that often, Brian. Yeah, So either. it must be a store. You know, you know, it's a walking distance from our office. It is. Yeah. But I usually walk in, get what I need, and walk out. There you go. That's just me. So that concludes our show for the week. I especially want to thank our guest, Tim. Nope, that's last week. Yeah. Thank our guests. Yes. Yes. And uh, um, it was a great show, Dan. Bruce, PJ, Beck, and uh, Pamela. Oops, Pamela. Thank Pamela. you, Pamela, with a great accent. So quote for the week, anyone can live in a house, but homes are created with patience, time, and love. Jane Green. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.